this is Whiskey Whereabouts. I'm Tim, and this is week five of Malt Madness. This is it. This is the final week, the final group of five competing to see who will make it into the finals. We've got a pretty interesting group here. We've got 15-year-old Deanson, 15-year-old uh, Tomatin in uh, Madeira casks, in tequila casks. We've got some 27-year-old whiskey in this flight. So who is going to advance to the final? Let's find out. My whiskey journey has taken me to Scotland and back. I've explored whiskey education, tastings, and distilleries from Isla to Speyside. And now my journey continues here with you on Whiskey Whereabouts. Okay, so one last time, if you don't know what any of this is, haven't seen any of the episodes that have preceded this one, um, we're celebrating Malt Madness uh, on the channel this month, and each week I have taken uh, five samples of uh, Scotch whiskeys from the Really Good Whiskey Company's Cask Explorers series, the premium Scotch Whiskey Advent Calendar from 2023. I seeded them, put them into five different groups, and each week we've done a tasting flight in which I will blind taste the whiskeys. They'll be placed randomly. I will not know which is which, and I declare a winner. And the five winners will then compete in the final championship flight, uh, and we will declare the champion of Malt Madness 2020. Four. So let's meet the competitors in this, the final group of five, the Badger group. Starting with the 13th seed in the tournament, it's a blended whiskey, the Lord Elko 15 year. It's only a 40% ABV whiskey. They do claim that they have an emphasis on the malted whiskey. The next competitor is the 12 seed in the tournament, Tomatin 15, but this is a 2006 Madeira cask matured 46 percent abv it's not chill filtered there's no color added it spent eight years in bourbon casks and then seven years in madeira casks next up the 11 seed in the tournament deanston 15 year tequila cask finish this is a 52.5 percent abv whiskey it spent 13 years in bourbon hogsheads and then the two-year finish in Scottish-made tequila casks. Next up, the 10 seed in the tournament. We have 27-year-old whiskey in this flight. It is single-grain whiskey from Gervan. It's via Drammore. It's 54.8% matured in a single refill bourbon cask. And the highest seeded whiskey in this flight is the nine seed overall in the tournament. A pretty well-known whiskey you may be familiar with but more 15 year. And unfortunately it has that inferior, but more presentation for the core range is 43% ABV. It is bourbon mature, but finished for three years in Oloroso casks. It is chill filtered. It has color added. Okay, so the competitors have taken the court. They have been poured, they have breathed, and it is time for me to uh, work my way through this flight. I'm gonna start on uh, the left side, as I always do, work my way whiskey by whiskey. Again, randomly placed, and I do not know which is which. So I'm gonna start over here with whiskey number one on the nose. Okay, so pretty subtle nose. I'm really leaning in. It's, it's, it's not a lot kind of roaring off the glass here. When I go in for the flavor, there is a sweetness here. There is sort of a perfumey kind of element, something kind of sticky sweet. There's also a fruit, it's like a peachy kind of fruit, maybe vegetal, something organic sort of underneath with this nose on whiskey number one. So not a huge sort of statement opening from this whiskey. Let's see how we do on the palette of whiskey number one. A lot more going on here in the palette. It is pretty watery, you know, in terms of mouthfeel, but it has a, you know, a little black pepper spice on the palate. It has a liveliness to it. It has a creaminess. The finish is even more uh, potent. I would say the finish is the, is the strongest part of this whiskey. I'm getting the fruit. I'm getting the dry fruit. I'm getting more um, roundness. There's a spiciness from, likely from the casks, um, liveliness. The, the sides of your, your mouth as, as the finish kind of, it's a it's solidly medium with a sort of a, a, a trailing off. It's pretty nice. It's a pretty nice finish. So now we move on to whiskey number two on the nose. Okay, so the peat is here, kind of know where I am with this whiskey. And I'm getting 
the sort of peat, the, the, the sort of smokiness of it is subtle. It has the more briny kind of qualities that we associate with the peat. It's a nice contrast to the peat. This is pretty subtle. It's not that complex. There is um, another element. There is the sort of sherry sort of sweetness, maybe, um, maybe the sort of dry fruit elements, but the fruitiest element is more tropical. It's lighter. It's kind of the third sort of phase of this nose. No heat at all. Um, very, um, very nice. What's here is very nice. So let's check out the palette. You know, sweet sort of forward. Peat aspects are pretty subtle. Very, very faint kind of ashiness maybe on the palette. The, 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 the sweetness is almost caramel. It's rich, so sticky sweet. It's very nice. Um, it's not a huge sort of mouthfeel. It's, but it's, 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 it's fine. Uh, the finish is where this whiskey's at. It's, it has a really nice finish. You get a nice plume of the sort of peat smoke. There's a fruitiness here, like a berry sweet, kind of really nice and rich medium. What's left is the ghost of the, the ghost of the sweetness and a little a tiny, the tiniest sort of dusting of just a little bit of bitterness. Um, not a very challenging whiskey, but nice. Okay, next up is whiskey number three. We're gonna go in on the nose. Okay, things just got a little more interesting. We've got a really, really sticky sweet here. Creamy, sweet, rich nose on this whiskey. Grand Marnier, whipped cream, butter, rich. Very, very inviting nose. Round, full, not really hot, but there's a lot here. So let's see uh, if the palate can deliver on this very intriguing nose here on whiskey number three. It's creamy, it's more vanilla um, on the palate. As it sits, you hold it, you get a little bit of the spice. You get the black, black pepper. You get a little bit of heat. It's not a very hot whiskey. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty drinkable. Yeah, what a nice long finish. A, a nice sort of plume of that flavor. That sort of liqueur kind of sweet kind of wine flavor kind of blooms up. Um, there is that sort of vanilla, sort of creaminess that's left on the palate, but then it sort of brings what heat it has, that's where it comes. As the, as the finish sort of develops, it plays out and it really kind of keeps going. You get a wave of the heat on, off the whiskey. You get a little bit of the sort of black pepper kind of sensation, that tingling. It's not a lot of bitterness here that you can kind of point to, but you can kind of tell that the cask kind of influence with all that sweetness is is there, keeping it kind of grounded. This is a pretty nice whiskey. Next up, we go to whiskey number four on the nose. Big, has some heat, has a brassy kind of big sort of element on top, then a layer, a real thick layer, very grassy. Again, buttery, salty, vanilla, honey sweet at the other end of the spectrum. Yeah, some spice, some heat, some kick, all sort of at the top layer wrapped around what the center of this whiskey is sweeter. Vanilla, cr creamier at the bottom, underneath all those layers. And now let's see how the palette plays out. Yeah, this is, uh, we, we sort of unmasked another one. This, this one's hard to mistake. This is a big whiskey. It has a lot of heat and it has that really saltiness. I mean, it, it, it honestly does feel on the finish, like you've had a margarita, it, it really does. It, it that that influence is really pronounced. That finish is big. It's long. It's hot. But what you're left with is really that sort of saltiness, oiliness. Going back to the palate, the palate is much closer to the nose. There is that sort of salty influence on top, but the palate isn't as oily. I, it's, it's big, rich mouthfeel, but it, it has that creaminess, that sweetness is still there on the palate. Then you go to the finish, and it's all the salt, oily, rich, citrus. That leaves us one more whiskey. 
Whiskey number five, going in on the nose now. You know, we, we, if you've watched all the episodes, we've sort of been on a journey here, and there's a certain type of whiskey um, that we get in these fights sometimes, and the, the first nose that I get is nail polish remover. I'm certainly getting that here. I have to let this kind of clear out. I have to acclimate to it so that I can then get into the flavors. Hot. It's a hot nose, and it has a real kind of like toasty cracker with some butter, not melted butter, like cold butter, like across it, if that distinction makes a difference. There is a fruity kind of, a really kind of dense, condensed sort of fruity kind of jam or fruit reduction at the bottom of this nose, but you really have to lean in and go looking for it. Let's see what the palette reveals. I'm liking this palette. It's pretty rich. It has a really savory peanut butter, like oily, pretty sturdy mouthfeel, pretty rich on the palate. So it's pretty nice. Um, finish is long. There's some heat here. There's clearly some ABV here. I've got the sort of warmth kind of in my chest, very pleasant. There is a lot of this savory kind of peanut butter, kind of buttery savory. There's a plume of a fruitiness. It's a little fresher than that sort of jam kind of condensed uh, version, um, a little bit more Fragrant, berry, a little bit juicier. Um, but there is, unfortunately, there's this sort of sharp kind of metallic kind of note that comes in at the first wave of the finish. I'm going to taste and compare. I'm going to come back. I'm going to reveal my rankings. And then uh, we're going to find out who the winner of the Badger group is. So I'm ready to reveal my rankings. And I have to say that we've had some very close sort of competitive finishes at the top of some of the prior flights over the weeks that preceded this one in Mount Madness. This is the closest finish we've ever had. I have two glasses in front of me that are completely empty. I went back and forth, back and forth, trying to decide which of those two is going to advance because it was so, so close. So... Let me start over here, where the I'll start ranking the whiskeys from the lowest rank on the left to the winner over here. And I'm gonna leave whiskey number one in its place. That is gonna be the lowest ranked whiskey. Moving on to whiskey number two, I'm gonna leave that whiskey in its place. Um, that's obviously the peated whiskey, it's obviously the Bamor, and it's gonna be the second lowest ranked whiskey. Now things get interesting. And what I'm gonna do is move whiskey number five over to the third position what i think for what i think this whiskey is a pretty strong showing the palette the finish on this whiskey uh pretty impressive um really enjoyed it and there is a sort of gap uh distance between these first two whiskeys so now we come down to it and this was really really close went back and forth could have gone with either whiskey would have been satisfied very happy to have tried both of them it came down to one of these two whiskeys being bigger sort of bolder and sort of going out there uh, a little bit more adventurous so i am going to move this whiskey to the winning position this whiskey number three is going to be the fourth whiskey so we have a winner and the winner is the deanston 15 year with that tequila cask finish. So the final flight where we crown the champion of Malt Madness, where I blind taste the five winners of all five groups is already up on the channel. You can click right here. I'm gonna put the link for you. Click through to see how this Deanston competes with the rest of the field. I'll see you then.